Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, it is now halfway through, it's almost out, oh, and maybe it's only a third of the way through December. And uh, the end of the year is approaching quickly, and that means 2020 is the year Windows 7 dies. <laughs> The last good Microsoft OS, probably forever, shall be taken back behind the barn and set down by Windows. As they are planning, the actual day is the 14th of January, 2020, and starting on the 15th, you are going to get full screen nags to remind you to update just it's like hey this is what it's gonna be like every single day on windows 10 have an egg screen <laughs> you want to get something done uh, 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 we're gonna spin the disc up to 100 percent. oh you want to get more stuff done pop up pop up pop up notification 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 oh we see that you've just cleaned all that stuff out We'll just go ahead and reinstall Candy Crush for you right now. That's one of the great amazing things you have to look forward to when you upgrade your computer to Windows 10. Or you can just switch to Linux. So the Linux desktop environment, um, you can get one that looks just like Windows, which is the one I like, Cinnamon, because I'm most productive. And there's a lot of other options that you have. If you want to be completely different, you want to do some Mac-y type stuff, you want to do however you want to do it. Not everybody can necessarily switch to, to Linux. Uh, we understand that, but definitely give it a try. And also, I want to do this video as a reminder that if you are waiting until the end of Windows 7 to switch to Linux, please do not wait any longer. You don't want to jump into your switch to Linux cold turkey. You're going to find that some things are a little bit different. You're going to want to figure out the workflow. You want to figure out a lot of things. So my first recommendations, let me actually get into my recommendations after let's uh, have a quick look at this article. Then we'll get into recommendations here. So uh, they are pushing out a new update. So of course uh, the update, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out which, uh, which KB update this is in the Windows Manager, Update Manager, and, and block it from installing. But what they are going to do is you will see full screen notifications warning that your Windows 7 PC is out of support. It will start appearing January 15th, the day after support ends. Microsoft will warn Windows 7 users who haven't upgraded that their PCs are more vulnerable to viruses and malware due to the lack of security and software updates and no tech support. There will be three options to dismiss the message, including the ability to remind later, learn more, or don't remind again. The full screen prompt will remain on the screen until a Windows 7 user has interacted with it. Windows 7 support will end January 14th, 2020, and Microsoft has been promoting Windows 10 as the main upgrade path for business and consumers. And in fact, it has finally passed Windows 10 market share because they sent out Guido to disable all these computers, so you were forced to buy a new one, because that's what they do. Microsoft's latest operating system now is set to hit 1 billion devices next year, <laughs> only like five years late. And uh, that's pretty much all they had to say about it. Let's see if there's any comments. Something like this could possibly have some spicy comments. I have an idea. Why not just automatically upgrade Windows 7 users to Windows 10? Oh, they tried that. The reason people are still running Windows 7 is because they don't like Windows 10. There's an option for that when Windows 10 was released. It was a free upgrade. I know it was because I did it. I'm not sure how it is now. Guy says, I was being sarcastic. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't know that. All right, it was a, it was smart of MS to do it that way, but sadly, on the family Vala, uh, Vio F laptop, which is now nearly a decade old, the last uh, latest update is 1909, caused some driver issues. So it's still free, just upgraded an old PC. I have on Windows 7, uh, having some IP configuration problems, however, since then, of course. Uh, heard that they were officially stopping free upgrade program. They will actually still do it. They probably should advertise it a bit better. Not sure everyone on 7 wants to upgrade to 10, but there are surely plenty of people who would if they understand what it meant. And so, let's see. Um, people are stubborn. They actually upgrade to Windows 10. Honestly, if they don't, they are uh, like they are to install Linux. Free to install Linux. There you go. There's an idea. <clears throat> also free to keep what they have and paid for. 
It's actually still is a free upgrade. You can upgrade. I see. That's the thing is, I don't want it. That's the problem. I don't want it. Um, I might actually upgrade my Surface Pro One to Windows 10 again. Uh, I actually haven't used that since like June. Anyone buy a want to buy a Windows Surface Pro One? <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, just so you know, even though Windows 7 won't get more security updates from all users, Microsoft is still creating security updates for Windows 7 because they will continue doing that for paying corporate customers. That means that although you are a consumer, could get Windows 7 security updates that patch Microsoft bugs, you won't get those updates because they want you to go to Windows 10. So that when uh, they have done the work for those updates, yet they don't want to have their bug fixes. And that's really it. Uh, so I'm not going to read any more of those. Uh, just a uh, friendly reminder, Windows 7 is going out of support. Now, does that mean you cannot use it anymore? Of course not. You can still get on. You can still use it. It is going to be very susceptible to malware, so you want to be extra careful about email attachments. Um, a lot of, you know, visiting shady sites, things like that. You just got to be a little bit extra careful with it. Now, suppose that you really hate Windows 10. Like, Windows 10 is what pushed me to Linux. I didn't use Linux at all until then. I mean, I was familiar with it a little bit. Um, I had, uh, you know, an in, in Ubuntu install disk laying around, and, you know, I booted into it a couple of times here and there. But what I ended up started seeing is the writing on the wall on Windows 10, and I said, you know what? I do not like Mac. Windows is not an option with the things that they're doing, so I'm going to get full-fledged into the Linux part. So I jumped into the Linux, and uh, frankly, I'm so glad I jumped into Linux. I've been so much more productive on my devices since then. Uh, you can do any degree of work. You know, you may not be able to do all of the exact same applications, but you can still do anything. I mean, I, I write books and publish them and distribute them entirely on Linux FOSS software. I do all of my channel stuff. I wouldn't even know, actually know how to do a YouTube channel on Windows. I really wouldn't. Um, but I do it all on free and open source software here on Linux. And uh, if you do want to jump in, though, don't wait until support ends. You don't want to get your, you know, throw your computer off. The first step you're going to do is start researching some of the pro uh, programs you're going to need to switch to and install them. Most of them are going to be cross-platform. So, for example, you're going to replace Microsoft Office with LibreOffice or something like it. Go ahead and install it on Windows for the last month. And then... Anytime you need to do any of that type of work, you want to get on and you want to start with using LibreOffice. Only jump back if you uh, if you you run into a bug and you cannot figure out you know how to do it. You don't have time to do it, and then you know figure out how to do it. And the fact is is that some people say LibreOffice is not nearly as compatible as Microsoft Office. That is actually simply untrue. Uh, the fonts are going to be different, so you're going to want to make sure that you install some Windows fonts on there, which you can just copy the fonts from your Windows computer over, in all honesty. Um, and you also want to save documents. If you're going to be sending documents to other Microsoft users, you're going to want to save documents in the DocX format. That's just a reality of sharing files. Now, I do that a lot, and I don't have any issues. And very, very, very few people are actually going to have any compatibility problems switching back and forth. You might find something here and there. There's other applications like GIMP or Krita, which can certainly go head to head with Photoshop. They are excellent applications and just a variety of other tools. So get those installed, start playing with them. And then as you have a chance, if you have an external hard drive or even a USB 3 flash drive, you can install Linux on that without affecting your Windows computer install Linux onto that, and then boot into that and spend some time in Linux trying to get some basic stuff done. Now, I have videos about how to do all these types of things from switching to Windows and and uh, to Linux to testing it to installing USB drives. I have a getting started with Linux playlist, which I'll leave in the description down here. So go ahead and have a look at that and uh, start making those changes. The reality is if you're not going to go to Windows 10, you want to jump over to something that's going to be more secure, particularly if you're doing internet search, surfing. Now, there's things like I still run one of my businesses. Accounting is still on QuickBooks. I'm going to keep it over there you know, as long as I possibly can. And if that means I need to pull a Windows computer off the internet and only boot it up to do book, books and accounting, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, my other business is entirely running GNU Cache at this point in time. So that's already switched over to Linux. So... 
just keep in mind that you might still need to do that, but if you need to do a lot of online things or email things, it might not be bad to have a boot up that you can do inside of Linux, do all that kind of more dangerous stuff because you're connecting to the outside world on your Linux systems, and then go over to the Windows systems for the things that need that. Same goes if you're, if you're a big gamer. You know, keep a Windows system around for doing your gaming and do a Linux system around for other things as well. There's a lot of options that you can do. This is just a reminder, Windows 7 is going to die. And uh, they, uh, Microsoft is going to drag it, um, kicking and screaming because it's alive and well to the back of the barn and it's going to double tap. And uh, that is a sad reality of where we are because they want all of us on Windows 10 so that Windows 10 can steal and harvest all of our data and they have big back doors into our computers. Things that you're not going to get on the Linux operating system. So definitely have a look at the videos in the playlist on getting started with Linux. Don't wait until the last day. Start experimenting now with the types of software you can do and figure out how you can slowly move your uh, move your workflow over to a Linux system. So that's what I want to say about that. So thanks for coming along and let me know your comments down below.